And I'm so grateful for writing uh, prophetically uh, songs from heaven. I'm just believing God for our own praise and worship CD one day down the road. How long? Amen. We're just going to confess today that there's a, there's a CD in this house. There's a praise and worship CD. How many of you believe that when you come in agreement with me today to believe that God, let's give the Lord a praise off in advance. I'm just decreeing that today that there's a music pro product in this house that's on the way that's going to inspire people to walk in faith. Amen. We're going to continue this series on coming into the blessings. We're going to continue this on coming into the blessings of God. We're going to start at Galatians 3, 13 and 14 this morning. We're going to talk about coming into the blessings. We talked about the word come is an action verb. It's an action verb, come. It gives us instructions on we have to begin to move towards the things of God. Come, an action verb. Coming into. We talked about on last week that Abraham declared three promises that God had given him over Isaac and Rebekah. We're going to talk about an Isaac and Rebekah generation this morning because in this 21st century, God is raising up an Isaac and Rebekah anointing. An Isaac and Rebekah anointing. We'll talk about that. Abraham said in, in Genesis 24 and 7, I just want to just pray to go back to what God spoke to Abraham. God said, Abraham, that I'm going to, number one, you're going to come out from your father's house, from the land of my kindred, which the Lord spoke unto him and says, listen, I'm going to give your seed. Look at this. Unto thy seed will I what? Give this land. One. Two. He shall send his angels before thee. Shout to somebody. He's going to send his angels before you. Three. Thou shalt take a wife unto my son from my kindred. When God speaks a word, he swears by his own name. Abraham, who comes in agreement with what God is speaking. It has not happened yet. Hello? You've got to get this down in your heart. The Bible is a prophetic book. That does not speak at where you are presently, but the Bible gives you where you're going. Tell somebody, it's where you're going. And it gives three specific promises to Abraham. I want you to grasp this. Because the Bible is a book of promises. And in this text, Abraham declares to the servant what God has promised him. And now we're going to look how Isaac and Rebekah comes into. They have to be developed. The word develop means the act or process of growth. And Brendan and I gave the example last week. A child comes from what? A baby. First is a infant, then a toddler, then a legacy age young child, then teenager, then young adult, and then seasoned people. Notice we said on last week, in the natural, a child has to grow into an adult. You cannot give an inheritance to your child that's for adult blessings. That's right. He may have inherited because he's your sons or daughters or your family. But there are certain inheritance you have to what? Grow. It's a process. But it's already been declared. It's already been given. But there's a process. 
process. Somebody say process. process. Grasp this because it, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. God being a loving father, there are certain blessings, there are certain inheritance. It's not that you're not praying enough. It's not time. Maturity is not defined by materialism. Maturity is defined by character. God is looking for spiritual sons and daughters. Every parent wants their children to be productive citizens. Am I right, moms and dads in here? You want their behavior to be good in school. You want them to be behaved in the home. So in the natural, so in the spiritual. The Lord wants you and I to become like Jesus, our big brother. I want you to grasp this this morning. The Heavenly Father wants more than a dance and a shout and a hoop and a holler. He wants relationship. That's what the Father wants. Everything you are going through is, pre is preparation. Don't get discouraged if you just got married that you're going to have some birthing pains early. What you see on this stage today has come through years and years and years and years. But she was mine when I was in the club. Didn't know it. I went through this one. I went through that one. Not proud about that. I know I'm the only one. I know I'm the only one. I know y'all been good all your little life and you've been holy all your life. But I went through some situations. But I ended up right here. Somebody shout grace. We don't want to talk about the process. No matter where you've been, no matter where you are, make up in your mind that whatever the Father has for me, it is for me. Glory to God. It's already been done. God told Abraham, I'm going to give your seed the land. I said, won't even born yet. I'm going to send angels to school, to the club with you. Somebody break it down. You thought it would look. It won't look. It was something. God had, it won't look. Man, the bullet missed me, man. Man, it was just the grace of God covering you when you didn't even know it. That's why you ought to praise him. That's why you owe God a praise and a thanksgiving. Tell me it was luck. No, it won't no luck. It was God. God in that word that was over your life. And then it says he's going to come into the right relationship. Hear this. He's going to end up with the right wife. Look at it. It's so clear. Parents, don't you stop speaking over your children. I don't care how many mistakes you have made. Don't you ever let people tell you it's too late. Sometimes God will let people see you mess up so they can see how God going to get the glory out of your life. The very ones who criticize you, talked about you, even some of your family may do it. God going to use you to get some glory out of you. God going to use God going to get some glory out of your mess. God going to get some glory out of your situation. But you got to know that it's come. It's process. I want to stay right there as we move because somebody don't understand the process. Don't you quit in the process. Rome wasn't built overnight. There's no such thing as instant Kool-Aid, instant grits in the kingdom. 
I know you can go to drive through McDonald's and get it like you wanted and go to Burger King. That's fine and natural. But in God, sometimes he takes you through some long suffering. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you got to learn the word wait. Oh, God. Tired of waiting. But the Father is about process. And this is why we're going to move now to Galatians 3 and 13. As we read this, you're going to see something here. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Notice Brenda has. He's already redeemed. He's brought you out of sin. Before you come out, redeem means to buy out. Not Christ's will. When Christ went to the cross, remember Brenda talked about this, Grace means you're already forgiven for every sin. There's no sin you can commit that God can't forgive you for. And when the enemy find out you know that, he'll back up because he don't want you to know that he's already forgiven you. That's right. Redeem. He's brought you out of sin. He's paid the price. But he don't want you to know it. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. There is now no condemnation to those who are not in church but in Christ. You got to be in Christ to know that he's already paid the price for your sins. There's forgiveness in the blood of Jesus. You don't have to try to be saved on your own. It was an act of what, brother? Grace. He has already redeemed you. You're not under the law anymore, legalism. You don't have to work to be saved. You work, to, you work because you are saved. He already paid the price. He already declared that, that, that the blessings of Abraham might come on you and I through Jesus. Tell somebody, it's in Jesus. It's in Jesus. Not in religion, but in Jesus. You are, when you are, if you are in Christ, then you are a candidate for the blessing just like sister. So I may not look like you. I may not be a, a fine or handsome as you, but it's got nothing to do with Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal. If you are in Christ, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Oh, somebody say all things. That's the world. All things are become new. You got to believe that by faith. No matter what your life is in. Your debt is paid in full. Paid in full. And so when the enemy comes to remind you, you let him know with confidence that that's already been paid for. Jesus already got that. He's already taking care of that for me. He's already taking care of it. And my debt is paid in full. I owe you nothing, Satan. I owe you nothing. Right. Because you are the righteous of God through Christ Jesus. And once we grab a hold of that revelation, the word of God tells us that if we sin and we confess our yeah. faults, what, what would God do for us? He's faithful and just. Now, he will not only forgive us, but he'll cleanse us. Yes, he will. That means that we don't have to feel dirty anymore. We don't have to feel guilty and ashamed anymore. We can stand clean through the blood of Jesus. And we can boldly say to the enemy, my debt is paid in full. But we got to grow to that process. We got to grow to understand. That's why the word of God tells us to renew our minds. Because the more we get the word in us, right. the more we're going to know the character of Christ. And the more we know the character of Christ, the more we're going to act like Christ. My kids are my kids, even though they, sometimes they're a mess. And we they don't stop loving them. They still have my DNA in them. No, 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 no. They are still mine. They may not act like mine all the time. Sometimes we used to say, who them kids over there? Where you come from? Who them kids? You know, but they're still yours. Come on, they're still yours. 
but they have to grow. You have to discipline them. God is a loving father. Just because he disciplined don't mean he don't love you. Don't confuse the discipline whom the Lord loves. He disciplines. Right, right. Show me a parent don't love their kids. I'll show you a parent that don't discipline their kids. When you love them, you got to discipline them because you love them. Mama said, I, I love you, boy. I love you. I said, love you, love me. Why are you trying to kill me here, mama? <laughs> I'm convinced my mom and dad and probably Elshon know this and Chris. I'm, I'm almost sure they would have been so sure it would have took me back in the day from them. They beat me. They, they, my mom and they love me, but I'm telling you, my mom and daddy beat me. <laughs> and it hurt. I wish I would tell my mom call social surgery. It probably would have got me before I could get it out of my mouth. It wasn't abuse, it was love. They had to discipline me. Elder Muthan said they had to touch my mind. You know, sometimes it takes that for some of y'all. You know, you can talk. My mama would talk. My daddy said, my, when my daddy calls, said, daddy, didn't do, daddy wasn't a good negotiator. <laughs> mama said, boy, 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 do this. Daddy come in swinging at the same time talking. <laughs> Am I right, Sean and Chris? I mean, but he loved me. My mama loved me. The shoe that almost got me. Boy, this go on TV. Don't y'all, we okay y'all on TV land. <laughs> How many of you are a product of, my, of, of somebody that disciplined you, love you? Uh -huh. Come on, I love you. We're not talking about a child abuse. We're not talking about, but see, they love us. The Bible says spread the rods for the child. We're talking about love discipline, love discipline. And we, and we go on somewhere because when the Lord loves you, he, see, he loves you so much that he's going he's gonna to deal with you because you're his. See, you belong to God. So you, you got to, he's your spiritual father. And I want you to understand this. And he's not going to let nobody pick on you but so much anyway. Come on, parents, you better not let nobody listen. You could mess. I may fight Sean and Chris, but nobody better not mess with them. Come on, oh yeah, oh yeah, we've had our battles. But mama told us to love each other. But you let somebody else mess with them. Oh, it's on then. Same thing in the spiritual realm. God loves you. And brother, now, see, repentance means not only to turn away from sin, but it means methanoia in the Greek, and it means to turn away from sin, but you got to turn towards God now. And what the Lord wants us, many of us to do, Paul said, I forget those things which are behind me. How do you forget the past? You got to begin to press towards the Lord. See, see, you turn away from it, but you still, you can't hang around some people that, that's negative. And the Lord's trying to get you to separate, but you keep going back to the whole pen. You keep going back to the people that pull you down. You can love them, but love them from a distance. That's right. And see, the enemy will put, put a number on you. Oh, you're better than them now? Oh, you think you're better than they are now? No, you got to see his trick. That thing had a hold on you at one point. Don't play around with fire because if you play with fire, you're going to get burned. And you know that that's fire for you. Leave it. Run. Run. Don't go back to it. Don't hang out around it. That's right. Because Isaac and Rebecca, one of the principles of coming into, this is so powerful, there's a coming into anointing that's in this place. Mm -hmm. Some of you are coming into some things in the earth realm that have been declared. How many of you know it's a fight when it's, it's c coming from the spiritual to the natural? Mm -hmm. right. I'm talking to millionaires this morning. You may not have a dime in your bank account, but I'm not talking where you are. I'm talking about mm -hmm. God said, I, see, see, I got to get you to operate in the spirit realm. Wow, he talking all that faith, prosperity stuff. See, he one of those preachers. No, I'm just speaking the word. That's right. He has redeemed me from the curse of the law. He became a sin for me. He took my poverty. He took my lack. He took my sickness. And now I'm just not going to speak those curses on me. That's how we marry people. We speak the promises of God. Well, it's all right. No, I'm not going to declare. I, he has redeemed me from the curse. Look at it. Why should I speak curses on you? Watch who speak over you. Watch what folks speak. Well, you'll never be no good. Your daddy won't no good. You may say that, but I'm a new creature in the blood of Jesus. I don't receive that. That's not who I am. That's who I was. I might not be all I need to be, but I know I'm not who you say I am. I'm the righteousness of God by Christ Jesus. I'm the head and not the tail. That the blessings. Somebody said the blessings. Blessings. See, might come on you. 
through Jesus Christ, and that you might receive the promise of the Spirit through what? Faith. faith. Your faith. It's your faith. I'm saved, but I got struggles. But by faith, I got to begin to say what God says. Yes, that's right. But pastor, I still got temptation. Well, the truth be told, all of us got some temptation with something. That's right. I know they told you in the holy church, this is a holy church, but holiness is not the way you dress. It's not a dress down to here. That's holiness is in the heart. It's, it's about changing your heart. It's about renewing your heart. We got G's on. That's okay. But see, I used to think of time that we won't write. You couldn't wear this to church back in my day and time. Ain't no preacher wearing no jeans. You want to wear black and white. I, I mean, I, that, that's what I... That freedom is not for me to do what I want to do. That freedom is do now what I ought to do. But I'm not in bondage. I want you to be free. Are you free? God don't want you yeah. in bondage. Oh, God, don't go back in bondage. You ought to be in a free. God wants you to be free in Christ. That the blessings may come on you through faith. Faith. Somebody say faith. Faith. Faith is a process. We said all that to get to this because Rebecca and Isaac with the promised seed, but it took time. Let's go to it. They had to submit to authority. The first thing they had, Brenda, they had both of them. Let's go to the text of that to prove this. And they called Rebecca and said unto her, Will thou go with this man? And Brenda, she said, I, I will go. go. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the even time. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. What about Rebecca? What and was she doing? there's a process here. You know, and what happens is that she is, she's a servant. Rebecca is a servant. There's a process in our growing. Uh, we've got to teach our children how to serve. Yeah. We've got to teach our children how to submit to authority. Because when we teach them how to submit to our earthly authority, when we teach them how to serve earthly, it's so much easier for them to submit to God and to serve out of a pure heart. So you look at Rebecca, and Rebecca, when the servant came up, Rebecca was coming to, to, to get water for her family. And she's met a stranger she had never seen before. She had nothing to gain by giving him water and watering his camels. She had no clue who he was. So she had a pure heart of servanthood. She didn't think it was beneath her to serve without expecting anything in return. Now, I work in a high school, and we, we'll, we'll, we'll have them will and deal and make all kind of deals with kids to do their work. You can do this. We'll let you do this if you do this. Okay, and I'm telling them, look, okay, well, that's your education. That's your education. What am I going to give you? Nothing. I'm going to help you not make an F. If you do this, you won't make an F. You'll be promoted. If you don't do it, I'll see you next year in the same grade. Why should I give you something for something you should be doing already? But it's what we need to teach. We need to teach our children. We need to teach them how to serve. We need to teach them how to be respectful. We need to teach them how to submit to authority. We need to teach them not to be disrespectful and rude. We need to teach them to say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Yes, yes, sir, yes, no, yes, sir. Yes. We need to teach them that. Teach that there's never been a time when kids have been so disrespectful. And it falls to the home. It's our responsibilities as parents to teach those child. If you have a rebellious, disrespectful child, it is your fault. It is. We had one of the stubbornest little kids that God could ever give a family. I mean, we tag team our son. We had to. He was horrible. Now, we could have said, okay, this is too hard. We just got to let him go. But my mother, I came from a single parent home. He came from mom and dad. Now, you heard his testimony about what his mom and dad did. I think my mom might have been a distant relative because we didn't take over her house. She brought out the rod of correction. Time out? My mama didn't know anything about time out. 
the time out you had when you were in the room doing this. <laughs> After she finished, that was the time out you had. <laughs> We've got to teach our children. We have to teach our kids how to be respectful. We got to teach them how to serve. We don't, I shouldn't have to pay my kids to do stuff. No, I need it. You need to serve because you're a part of this family. If you want me to pay you to clean your room, pay me to eat my food. Pay me to use my electricity. Pay me to sleep in the bed that I bought. I taught my kids at an early age. They go, Ma, Rick is in my room. I run get the uh, mail and look at the mortgage and look for Raquel on the mortgage. <laughs> and when I didn't see it, I said, where's your room, baby? Oh, well, the room you let me use. Okay, let's not get it twisted. Understand <laughs> that mom and dad is providing this. And that's not wrong. That's right because they begin to understand and respect what they have. We have a nation of children who feel privileged. And I don't want my kids to go through what I went through. No, I don't. I want them to have better. But I want them to have manners. Glory and I God. want them to appreciate. I want them to learn to submit to God. And if they learn to submit to earthly authority, they will learn to submit to heavenly authority. And Rebecca, yes, yes. she knew how to submit because she submitted to earthly authority. Even once the man gave her gifts and jewels, she ran back home to tell her mother and brother. She was submitted. She had a pure heart of servanthood. Expecting nothing in return. Camels drink a lot of water. That was hard work for her. But she did it. And she did it out of a pure heart because in her mind, she had no way of knowing, oh, this man, I, he going to take me to a rich guy. I'm going to get a rich Boaz. She didn't know that at the moment. At the moment, this was a stranger that she was serving out of a pure heart. And we've got to learn to serve out of a pure heart, not serve to be connected to the pastor. Not serve to get a position in ministry. Not serve to be connected to someone. Not serve so I can have a luncheon pad for my own ministry. We got to serve out of a pure heart. Simply for the kingdom. And Rebecca was a young lady who knew how to submit to authority. And she knew how to serve. Amen. Let's thank God for every single mom. It's every single dad. I want to just thank God. We're behind you. The sense of anointing in this era, the power of submission. Now, Isaac, when he was 17 years old, you see him in the field meditating. We'll talk about that at the evening time. He was in the field serving. Notice he was, he was where? In the field. He was not looking for a wife. He was not searching. Please hear this in the spiritual realm as a natural. The job will come to you when you submit and be faithful on the job you don't like now. If you don't learn how to be a good follower, you'll never become a good leader. God will never entrust you. That's right. It's the attitude in which you serve your leader in, That's spiritually right. and naturally. God knows your attitude, and submission don't mean I'm going to do it if, if you're going in the right direction. I'm going to serve you even when you're not doing what I think you're going to do. See, it's easy to serve when things are going good, but you've got to submit when things are not going good. You don't get a wrong attitude and just break covenant because you're mad. See, God got to get that out of you. Because, you, you, see, how you serve somebody else is how people are going to do you. That's right. I'm reaping how I serve my pastor right now. And it wasn't easy. I won't even go through it. It wasn't easy. I cried a many days and many nights. But I promised God I understood that he was the pastor, not me. <laughs> Though folks tried to make me to be the pastor, I knew my place was to serve him. It wasn't matter who preached the best, but I got to preach him. Listen, I'm not the smartest guy in this church. I'm not here because I know more. God has anointed me to be a pastor. There are people that can do it much better, but you got to know your place. When God put you in a place, stay in the place God put you in. And if you're faithful there, he'll promote you. On your job, you mean you're in a dead-end job? Go get the best. If you flip, if you had McDonald's, flip those burgers the best you could flip them. You get the work early, and you go in there, and you give that man the best work. And after a while, God will promote you. Can I get a witness in this place? Promotion comes not from the east, the west, the north, the south. God sees everything that's being done. He has a seeing eye. God said, I see you in those places. I want you to know, when you're mistreated, God sees you. God saw day 
David on the backside of the mountain. He was anointed to be king. Sheep feasting. It was part of David making. He was, a, he was king keeping sheep with feasts on him. But he submitted to his father. He knew more. He knew that God was preparing him. And it was over 17 years later before he came into kingship. We got to teach submission. Right. It looks easy out here, but you don't know the price of submission. That is the thing that God is looking for. If God got you in a rough place right now, stay in that place. Don't be afraid of submission. Because Rebecca submitted and served herself into destiny. A wealthy destiny. This young lady who served unselfishly was God's chosen mother yes. of Esau and Jacob. Yes, she was. She was. And Brenda, Isaac, at 17, went through one of the greatest tests of submission. His father was instructed by God to go to worship. It is always in worship that you'll win every battle. That's right. Learn to praise him. Because Isaac recognized his father does not have the lamb. He said, Father, I see the knife. And how to explain to them that Isaac is about 17 Isaac at this time. Isaac was 17. Now, you, know, you know when your kids get 17, they'll tell you some things. Mm, I, don't, I, don't want no, I don't want no Kmart sneakers. I want some name brand sneakers now. <laughs> I could trick them when they was 5 and 6 and they got 17. I said, well, it's time you get a job because I ain't going to be buying sneakers more than what I'm putting on the table. I, I'm not buying you no 200. I said, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. But see, you, you need to go over there to find auntie and find uncle and find cousin or somebody. But over here, I'm not buying you no sneakers that cost more than your groceries bill. Than grocery bill. <laughs> not right now. Nothing wrong with it. Maybe one day. But at that time, see, you got you to gotta, you maneuver where you are. I ain't right. trying to compete with the Joneses. Matter of fact, I bless the Joneses. I celebrate the Joneses. I'm not even the jealous. Learn to celebrate people. But right now, for right here in this season, this is where we are. And be faithful where you are. Thank God for the little that you have. I thank God for the car that you drive. Thank God for the apartment you're in. Don't mom and complain. Be faithful right where you are. Go to work. Thank God I thank you for at least a job. I thank you. Learn how to be faithful where you are. Be faithful over a little. And God said, I bless you over but Somebody give Lord a prayer. Praise off in this place. Glory. Isaac was tested. That's right. When you know you've been faithful. God, where are you? Abraham can imagine. He, he's a man of faith, but he's a man of character. God said, I want to make you a pastor with integrity. Mm. Not just a gifted guy. This ministry is building character in people. You want to know pastor emphasis? Love is the greatest thing that moves God. That's right. What keeps a marriage together is love. You're going to hear me talk about this until he takes me home. Isaac was tested. Abraham took the knife back. Isaac wondering, God, it looks like my life. What's wrong? God, what's wrong with my marriage? What's wrong with the ministry? God, I don't understand. If he would take you through those experiences, knowing that you were born for greatness, but you got to go this way. Parents, have you ever been where you couldn't bail your children out? Sometimes you can't even help them. All you can do is pray for them. Abraham could not even get in the way of God. There are times I want to get in the way of God, and it's tough because I love people. And God said, you got to leave them alone because they got to learn. As long as you think the problem is somebody else and not you, I would never blame people, elders, or my other pastor. Nobody can stop my destiny but me. God was trying to get me humble. I thought it was people. All you do is leave one job and take the same problem to another job. <laughs> you got to get somewhere and be still and let God. In your marriage, 
you're going to go to one marriage to another one. you got to come to a point that, God, you're trying to work something in me. He's not forgotten what he's promised you. I want to speak to somebody. He hasn't forgotten. Somebody say, hello? Not long. It's on the way. Isaac did not quit. God provided Jehovah Jireh. He'll always show up when you be faithful. You might not know how he's going to make a way. The bills will be paid. He'll take you through it. Look, anybody know when it looks like you're not going to make it? Anybody been there when it looked like it was over? Even when you messed up, didn't God step in right in time? Didn't God come in the nick of time? Didn't God come through and make a way when you couldn't take no more? Sometimes God will let you get to the last place. And what you know, I'm God. I'm God in your situation. I'm God all by myself. I'm Jehovah Jireh. I'll provide for you. I'll open up a Red Sea for you. I don't know where I'm going this way this morning. This is not in my notes this morning. You know, it's just like the enemy that causes us to have amnesia. In the midst of the storm, the enemy will attack our memory. And make us forget what God has done for us thus far. Because we're overtaken in that trial, in that storm, that our memory get hazy. It just get a haze on it. But we've got to remember what God has brought us through. So that while we're going through this, we can boldly say this too we'll pass. shall pass. We've got to know that this too, no matter what it is, no matter how intense it is, this too shall pass. I remember us sitting, our daughter, Jacinta, and we took her to the doctor. The doctor mixed diagnosed, sent her back home. She had to go through the weekend. In my Noah, the Lord says something's not right. Take her back to the doctor. We took her back to the doctor on Monday. The doctor stepped in the door and went, oh, my God, we got to send her to UNC. She didn't even have to examine her. He knew, she knew from the door what was going on with her. And she and I, here I am, I'm, I'm in the storm. My mind is phased. I can't, even, I can't even process what she's saying. And I'm saying, okay, well, we'll take her home. She's like, no, no, she's going to the hospital. And I'm like, she'll be all right. I'm going to take her home. She said, either you take her to the hospital or we're going to take her. But she's going to the hospital. Because the enemy will take us when we're overwhelmed emotionally. And he'll mess up our mind. And then we've got to remember We've got to remember in that situation that God is still God. No matter what it looked like, he is still God. And Jacinta is here today to testify of the mercy and the grace of God in her life and in our lives. We almost lost our baby. But you know what? Even in that, God was still God. So in our mess, in our storm, in our emotional fit, in our guilt-written state, God is still God. This Hallelujah. too shall pass. And Rebecca said, I will go. Tell somebody, I will go. I will Lord, go. it's not easy, but I'll say yes. Lord, I don't have the money, but I'll say yes. Lord, I don't know how it's going to work out, but I still believe you're going to keep your word. God, in my marriage right now, in my job right now, I'm in my children right now, I'm in a place, but God, I'm learning how to trust you, God. If you say move, I move, God. I'll, I'll go, Lord. I don't know what it's going to look like, but God, I'll say yes to your will. God, I may have to go by myself, but I'll say yes, Lord. Lord, with tears in my eyes, I'll say yes, Lord. Lord, I don't understand what's going on in my life, but yes, Lord. I will praise you, Lord. I will yet praise you, Lord. The man said to him, you got to praise God. Your breakthrough is in your praise. You got to praise God in the good times. You got to praise God in the bad times. It is an attitude of saying, God, I thank you. In the midst of this, I thank you. Somebody stand to your feet and give God a praise in this place for where you are. We're going to stop right here. Come on, give God a praise. Give God a praise. She said, yes, Lord. Who am I talking to this morning?